like on telemetry or in ICU, in CCU. Dementia, Alzheimer's, you've got patients that's got depression, right? Now, Cameron, what kind of patients do you see in the ER? <laughs> a ton of them. No, there's, there's so many. There's a lot of repeaters that come in and some place to stay. Like I worked in the ER this past weekend. A guy come in just because he went out and on a binge or drinking. He didn't have nowhere to go, so he admitted him into the emergency room because he was having suicidal thoughts. Yeah. That's two words you say. I want to kill myself. I want to kill somebody else. And they're putting in. <laughs> okay. Now, does anyone else work in the ER? All right, at Rowan, we have a psych pod. In that psych pod, there's four beds. And there's usually at least two to three patients in there at all times. Now, if there are four patients in there, does that mean we can't take any more psych people in? No. no. Because there are three other pods. They were actually moving psych patients on Sunday to our E-pod 3, and me and another nurse were down there taking care of about six to seven psych patients and this includes the one that's been there about three or more weeks that ended up wanting to fight and he got tased by police and has been handcuffed to the bed yes so these are some of the things you can see when I said about the antisocial personality disorder, last year, the last day that we were at the VA, me and about four students got locked in the day room with some of the older veterans because we had a younger guy. Number one, he got mad because he wasn't assigned a student. Well, when you go to the VA, they tell me who to keep students away from. You don't talk to them. You don't go up to them. If they try and talk to you, of course... Be nice, but then you're getting away from them because they are unpredictable. That was the first reason he got mad. The second reason he got mad is because one of the patients that we were dealing with had some mental incapacities. He wanted to color all the time. Well, guess what our students were doing with him? Sitting and coloring. So he ended up going in that patient's room, which is a no-no, getting his coloring books out, which then made him get upset. So then he decided, well, let me just go take a crap in my room and we'll spread it all over everywhere. And that's what he did. Antisocial personality. And I knew that it was going to be a bad day when we were sitting in report and he was trying to bust in the door by kicking and beating. Okay? So these are just some of the things that you may see at the VA. We will be talking to our people, but at the VA, everything's in a locked ward. You will have keys. You do not go anywhere by yourself, and that it means even to the bathroom. Okay? When I'm with my students, my eyes are constantly roaming, and I'm counting them. If you are going to go somewhere else with to talk with your patient, another student needs to go with you. But you will learn all this. At Rowan, it's a little different. It is a locked ward. Um, you won't have keys. Miss Hyde will have a key, but she will have to let you in and out. Okay, so things are a little bit different. But I know you're scared. It's a very scary situation. I mean, because people can change at the drop of a hat. My thing, or what I would tell you, is if someone starts acting out, you just need to step out of the way. Because I can tell you when they do it at the VA, they are surrounded very quickly. Okay? Because when one patient acts out, what do you think it does to everybody else? Okay? But we're going to have fun. Learning about all this good stuff. Any questions so far? So when we were talking about mental health, what is mental health? What do you, what do you think mental health is? 
This is a vacation day. When you call in and say, I just need a mental health day, I just can't work today. So if you have good mental health, what does that mean? You can survive when something stressful happens. There are good stressors and bad stressors, right? A good stressor might be, I got promoted at my job, and I know there's going to be more responsibilities, but I can handle that. A bad stressor is, my husband lost his job. But when you have good mental health, you can handle that, right? You don't have to act out. You don't have to use alcohol, use drugs, right? So when you are mentally ill, what has happened? You can't cope. You can't adapt to those changes, right? So it's like a continuum. Over on this side, we have our well-being. Occasional stress to mild distress. There's really no impairment. You can handle things. But then stuff starts happening. My husband's lost his job. I'm in nursing school. Of course, I'm not working. I'm broke. Uh Uh-oh, we're starting to get into some emotional problems because now me and my husband, we're fighting all the time about finances. He's trying to find a job, but what's the job situation today in today's economy? Some emotional problems, concerns start. Okay, what's our stress level doing? Going up. It can cause a mild or temporary impairment. What do you think can happen then? I just don't want to get up today. I'm just staying in the bed. I don't want to deal with anything. If you've got kids, what's something you may do to your kids? Yell at them. Take out stresses. You snapped. Okay? Uh Uh-oh. When we get over to mental illness, we've got marked distress, moderate to disabling or chronic impairment. These are people that can't even go to work. Okay? They avoid any type of relationships, whether it's friend relationship, family relationships, personal. There are a lot of people that have mental illness and they have burnt their bridges with their family. And you will see that. It's like when you get report, you will hear their wife just don't even want him back home. He wants to go home, but she don't want him back home. No, mom's not going to take him back to keep him in here. Okay? So, any questions on that? You understand about mental health? It's a mental illness. So, when we have stress, y'all don't have any stress, do you? No, not nursing students. So, some physical signs of stress. What is that fight or flight syndrome? Your adrenaline kick? What happens? Your heart speeds up, your respirations, your blood pressure goes up. Some people can get a headache. When you get nervous, who gets sweaty palms? Who's going to get nervous when they have to get up here and do their presentations? Who's going to have sweaty palms? Let me sit down. (laughs) I used to be scared to death to get up and talk in front of people. You wouldn't know that now because I have a loud mouth. But I got over that. Sensation of dizziness. Why do you think they get dizzy? What's going on in their body that's making them dizzy? Blood pressure's going up. They can have some syncopal episodes. I've had a past student that the thought of having to get up in front of her classmates and talk sent her into panic attacks. But guess what she had to do? She had to work through that. She had to suck it up. Put her big girl panties on and let's go. All right, so then we're looking at our psychological. What happens psychologically when we're under stress? You get anxious. Who in here has anxiety? Start worrying about stuff, you start getting anxious. You can have four stages of anxiety. Mild, it's not really causing a problem. There's no impairment. We can, we can deal with that. But then when you start getting up to that moderate and severe, okay, it's starting to affect we can't perform at our job. 
we're having issues at home. What about that panic mode? Can you comprehend anything that anyone's trying to tell you? No. No. And then we also have our grief. What's the five stages? Denial. Oh no, it can't be happening to me. Anger. I cannot believe God has let this happen to me. Bargaining. Lord, I'm sorry. Please, if you can just get me through this, I will do anything. Depression. No, I'm just not getting up out of bed today. I just, I can't do it. And acceptance. You know what? I'm just going to take this one day at a time. Right? Now, do you think you're going to see anxiety in any stages of these grief during your psych rotation? Think about some of the patients you've had just in the hospital in general. What happens when a person with COPD gets anxious? Hard to breathe. When you can't breathe, that is a scary thing. Okay? The more anxious they get, the harder to breathe it gets. And then pretty soon, if you don't get it under control, they are going to work themselves up to where they could go into respiratory arrest. Okay? Any questions on the physical or psychological? All right. So did anybody watch my funny little extras? No. I thought we were going to go into class. <laughs> I bet you. All right. So when we're looking at mental illness, seven signs of mental health. So let's start. We're happy. That means we have control of our behavior. Appraisal of reality. That means we're alert and oriented. We know what's going on. Effective in work. We can work. No problems. We deal with everything. A healthy self-concept. What's a self-concept? What you think about yourself. You have satisfying relationships, whether it's family, spouse, with your children, friends. Effective coping skills. That means when something happens, you can cope with what's happening. Which leads back around to what? Happiness. Happiness. So mental health, some attributes. So these just break it up a little bit um, more. Appraisal of reality, you can love and experience joy. You can deal with conflicting emotions. Live without fear, guilt, or anxiety. Okay? You take responsibility for your own actions. How, how many times have you heard that? As nurses, do we have to be accountable and take responsibility for what we do? Ability to control your own behavior. Are there many times that patients make me mad? Sure. Can I show that to them face to face in the room? No. Not if I want to keep my job. Where can I go and show how mad I am? Locker room. You can vent to who? Other nurses, your co workers. Okay? You think clearly, which means you can problem solve. You have good judgment. You're logical. You can relate to others in that you can form relationships with others and have lovable, adaptable relationships. Um, whereas the group that has dependent personality disorders, what do you think that means? You're always dependent on somebody else. What do you think I need to do? Tell me what to do. What should I wear today? Do you think I should eat this today? Yes. So you're always dependent on somebody else to answer the question for you. Attain self-defined spirit spiritually, religiously. Not everyone believes, but a lot of our patients do. And you will see that some of these people think that they're hearing God talk to them. Okay? Do you go and say, you are not hearing God. God is not talking to you. Okay. Do you say that to them? No. What could you ask them? What is he saying to you? Okay. You're wanting to know what they're sharing. 
one thing, what's one thing that we have to ask people when they come into the hospital, Cameron? Under the, the, um, the mental assessment, what are things we ask every patient that comes in there? Are you having any suicidal Do you have feelings of hurting yourself or anybody else? Have you felt helpless? Have you felt lonely? Have you been crying? And that is everybody, not just the ones we know is coming in saying, I'm going to go kill my ex-wife. That is every patient. And they look at you like, yeah, we have to ask every one of these. Okay? Ability to work and be productive. You want to maintain a healthy self-concept and self-value. And you have the ability to play and laugh. So, these are factors that influence a holistic nursing assessment. So we're looking, do they have a support system? Okay, do they have family, friends? When it says community, what's that mean? Right, in their neighborhood. What about, do some people go to their church for support? Yeah. Um, religious influences, family influences. You know, we may see cultural influences. Does every culture handle illnesses the same? No. What if you have a Muslim patient? The patient is female and her husband is there. Who answers everything? It's the husband. I had someone tell me that they had a Muslim woman come in to give birth and the nurse was trying to talk to her. You know, how bad your pain? Do you want anything for pain? The husband said, no, she's just fine. And she was never allowed to answer one question and she was never allowed to have any pain medication. But that was their culture. Okay? Personality traits. Where they live. What does that have to do with anything? Their environment. Poverty. Are they homeless? Okay. I know a lot of people that they just live out in the woods, down by the river, down by the creek. Um, negative influences. What kind of psychosocial stressors do they have? Um, do they not have a job? Are they poor? Um, inadequate parenting. What about these mental, mentally ill people that have children? What are those children having to go through? Um, like I said, cultural beliefs and values, any health practices and belief, um, and that, like Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't get blood, blood products. Okay, Biological influences, inherited factors. Do you think that some mental illness can be inherited? Yes. Environmental experiences. So, mental illness is plagued by a myth. What's a myth? A belief that's not backed up by anything. It's usually faulty. And what's a misconception? What? Misunderstood. Misunderstood. Y'all agree with that? Uh, a myth would be that the mentally ill is very different and odd. <clears throat> there are people that are mentally ill and are diagnosed with bipolar, schizophrenia, and they work 40 hours a week. And we would never know it. Do you believe that? Yes. Yes. Now, granted, there are some that are different and some that are odd. And you will see that. What do you think a misconception would be about mentally ill? That they're all crazy. That they're all crazy. But they could I'm, change it if they want to. They could be different. Yes. You don't have to act that way. Do you think that's true? <clears throat> I'm going to tell you, a lot of mentally ill people, they are very smart. Okay? And they know how to play the system. 
For example, the guy that come in this weekend, he went on a banjo, got drunk, come in. Now, granted, I knew that he had been a chronic alcoholic. But two hours after he's there, he rings out and tells me, I'm, I'm starting to go into DTs. I need two milligrams of Ativan now. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, if you're used to drinking alcohol every day, you're not going to go into DTs within two hours. But guess what? He knew what he wanted. So, me being the good nurse, I went and told the doctor, Mr. So-and-so, he's wanting some Ativan, give him a milligram. But, P.O., guess what he wanted? IV. IV. But he didn't get that. No consistent line exists between mental illness and mental health. At any time, any one of us could what? Break. What do you think happens with these people that go out and shoot up a school? They've gotten stressed and stressed and they just got to the point they can't take it anymore and they break. At any time, any one of us could do that. Do you believe it? Look at the person beside you. At any time, do you think they could break and go on a homicidal rampage? Lakeisha says she's not going to break. She good. Well, I hope none of you break, especially All right. Psychiatry's definition of mental health changes and reflects changes in the cultural norms and society's expectations. What do you think society thinks about people that have mental illness? That they're crazy. And where do they get a lot of their ideas? TV. TV. Because usually, how does TV put them out there? That they're crazy. Okay? Values and professional biases. As nurses, we shouldn't have any biases. But do we? Yes. If we know that somebody's coming in just because they're a drug seeker, oh, I tell you, I've got plus him back pain and um, morphine and Demerol doesn't touch it, but I need the law. That's the only thing that's going to help. Now, what kind of thing are you going to think about them as you go out the door? Or I'm allergic to all this, but this is the only thing I can take. <laughs> Have you seen that? Yeah. Has patients told you that? So we develop a, a professional bias against these patients. And I'm guilty. I've done it. Um, individual differences and political climate. Is everybody the same? No. No. We're all different. You know, I always tell people when we start looking at heart rhythms and trying to figure out what your patient's doing on the heart monitor, I said you can take one strip to four different cardiologists and you could get four different answers. So it's all in what they've been taught. So everybody's different. The psychology of women. Now, men, you be nice in here. <laughs> Why do you think that's effective? <laughs> Hormones. Blame it on that time of the month. Is it true? Yes. Women, what do you think? Sometimes. 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 Two teenage daughters. I'm right there. I have one. It's 15, and it's like I told the freshman yesterday, because we had to get up and say, you know, I'm slow. You won't send me till second year. And here's something about me, that I have a 15-year-old that just got a permit, and every time I get in the car with her, I need a Xanax. <laughs> so pray for me. <laughs> The day she got a permit, she ran two stop signs. <laughs> and Mama's over here screaming, Did she not see that? <laughs> On my side, I do. <laughs> and then issues of homosexuality. What do some people think about that? Um, I don't know. Has any of you ever went to Broughton? Not as a patient, but... <laughs> Jeff, you've been there? Um, I ha when I first started, I was did part-time clinicals for Mitchell Community College in Statesville. Well, they were going to go and take a tour of Broughton. 
Well, unfortunately, there was something going on, and I was the only instructor that had to go take about 40 nursing students to Broughton. Well, one thing that they do have there that's really nice, they have a huge library. They even have records that date back to the very first patient that ever went to Broughton. Okay? So a lot of the times, it would have the patient's name, their age, like where they come from, but then it would have their diagnosis. Do you know what the majority of people were put into these sanitariums for? Hmm? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> UTIs? <laughs> what do you think? So Jeff says depression. James says hysteria. Nope. Homosexuality. This, homosexuality, or STDs. In the psych ward. Because what can some STDs eventually do if they're not treated? What are they going to affect? The brain. The brain. I thought that was very interesting just because at that time I didn't teach psych. But these are different things, myths and misconceptions that people have. Okay? Are they all true? No. And you will see that. The one thing I think that my students got out of the psych rotation last year, they went in scared to death. You know, oh my God, what am I going to go in there and talk to this patient about? You know, I don't know, I'm scared to death. But by the last day they were there, oh God, I love this rotation. You're t it is so good to see the mindset and the change that will come over you. Because I'm going to tell you, I sit in there and bawled like a baby listening to some of them veterans talk. And you will. I mean, it's very, it's hard. And just for your FYI, if you're going to the VA, if you take a deck of cards, they will love you forever. <laughs> <laughs> they like to play cards in there, by the way. All right, so all people, they have different backgrounds, cultures. They grow intellectually and emotionally at different rates. Not everybody progresses at the same speed. Make different decisions at different times. Choose to or choose not to evaluate their behaviors. They grow within their selves. What does that mean? Mature. Okay. What you thought when you were 16 years old, is that the same way you think now? No. No. Or even 18 or 19. What's my youngest person in here? 20. Huh? You're 20. Do we have any younger than 20? How's Tyler back there? 16. <laughs> so, now granted, tell me your name. And I promise that by the end of the semester, I will know everybody's names. I only know really the ones that I've had in clinical or I work with. So, Jessica. Jessica. So Jessica is 20. Do you think that her thoughts and feelings are going to be the same when she turns 40? Or even when she turns 25? No. No. How old are you? 25. 25. Do you think Cameron's thoughts and feelings are going to be the same when he turns 30? 40? 40? 50? Yeah. Yeah. Till the day he dies. Do you still think the same way as you did when you were 15? <laughs> I need to talk to your parents. <laughs> All right. Have or have no spiritual beliefs. And understandably then, no one definition of mental health exists to fit everybody. Agree? All right. Stigmas. You heard that word before? Stigma has been acknowledged to be a major barrier to mental health treatment and recovery over the last 13 to 14 years. That's not changed. Stigmatizing attitudes toward people who are mentally ill have harmful effects on the individual and family, especially if what people are saying or thinking about them is not true. Okay? Stigma. What is it? It's a collection of negative attitudes, beliefs. Ooh, went too fast. I hate this whole thing, it's 
too touchy. Thoughts, behaviors that influence the individual and the general public. Do you have, have you ever thought a certain way about certain people? About certain kind of patients? Yes. Psychosocial processes that lead to stigmatization include you stereotype somebody, you label them, oh, they're just a drug seeker. Okay? You separate them out. In the ER, they put them in the psych pod. They're separating them out from who? The normal patients? Status loss or discrimination in the context of power imbalance. Social isolation. What would that include? Hmm? Keep them away from people. Keep them away from people? Padded rooms. Padded rooms. You're going to the seclusion room. And they do have those at the VA. And you will get to see them. Reduced opportunities. What about somebody that is a schizophrenic, but they're taking their meds and they go and try and get a job? Do they have to list that they're a schizophrenic? Depending on. What if someone that was schizophrenic wanted to go and buy a gun? So, could they not get a job because of their mental illness? Yeah. I mean, if it was you and you, somebody come in that was schizophrenic or bipolar and you knew about that, would you hire them? Do you think there are people that work in the hospital that is bipolar? Yes. <laughs> Do you think people work in the hospital that have depression? Yeah. Do you think people work in the hospital that have anxiety? That abuse alcohol? They could abuse drugs. We never know. Okay. Any questions about this? Have you, by reading this, have you done that to somebody? Cameron's like, yes. <laughs> I do it every day I go into work. <laughs> So psychiatric care compared with obtaining treatment for other physical disorders, for example, if you went in just with chest pain or CHF, entry into the healthcare system for treatment of the psych problems can be a mystery. The guy that has been at Rowan for three and a half weeks this weekend, he is now number four on the list to go to Broughton. He was number six, so in a week's time he went down two places. So, it's not easy to find a place for these people. Okay? Seeking treatment for mental health problems is very complicated. The nature of the mental illness is misunderstood. Psychosis impedes a person's ability to recognize the need for care. Do you agree with that? Somebody that is bipolar, what if they're in their manic phase? They think they need help? Everything's hunky dory. You're the one with the problem. I don't have a problem. And you're going to hear that a lot. Apathy is present. No motivation exists to seek care. So, what type of psychiatric environments do we have? 24 hour nursing care, you have the lock units, and that is for safety. There's. And who else's? Ours. You have crisis care, where they actually have mobile crisis units. Um, residential treatment programs. What would that include? Hmm? 30 days. 30 days? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'd love, like, 30-day programs. 30-day programs. 30-day. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said, 30 days. <laughs> What would that include? Broughton. General hospital psych units. That would be like Rowan. Um, their little psych unit. They actually have one for the younger adult, and then they have the Lynn Geriatric, which is for the older patients. Private psychiatric hospitals that they can go to. Does anyone know of any other psych hospitals they have besides Broughton? Grandview. 
Randolph. Randolph. Dorothea Dix. Dix. I thought they were closing that one down. At one point they were. I don't know if they have yet. They actually, I think, need more. Just because, I'm going to tell you, since I've been working in the ER, there are more (laughs) psych patients in Rowan County than I ever imagined. It's getting worse. And it's getting I have not seen them ship them out of state. Now, that's always a possibility, but then again, what if their support systems are here? Um, Of course, all those are inpatient, outpatient. A lot of these patients, they may go to their primary care provider, especially if it's just anxiety or depression. Their private um, physician may try and handle that. Patient-centered medical homes primary care medical homes, community mental health centers. They have psychiatric home care, and then you have intensive outpatient programs. What would that include? Daymark. Daymark. The PTSD unit at the VA, because there are veterans that come in on certain days for certain things. They have a very nice workout room in the PTSD at the VA. So psych nurses, a common misperception regarding psych nurses in acute care settings, because they just talk, they lose their skills. First, therapeutic communication itself is a skill that people are not born with. You have to learn it. And that is including, you know, those process recordings that you do. Mm -hmm. What's some therapeutic communication? Name a couple. Silence. I always love silence. <laughs> Restating, reflecting. Right? Tell me more. Open ended question. What's something you should never say? Why? Why? Okay. Second, patients in the psych unit often have complex health care needs, they could be a diabetic. They could have hypertension. They could have had um, heart bypass. So they have other medical problems, too. Do you think that these nurses only give psych medications? No. No. If they're diabetic, they could be on glucophage. They have to know about those medications, right? Do they have to check blood sugars? Do they have to listen to lung sounds if the patient has congestive heart failure? Yes. Although I know at the VA, and I'm not sure how it will be at Rowan, it is very different, the nurse's role. And that's one of the things we do want you to look at. Look at the nurse's role. What do they do? And not that you know, you're going to be able to follow them everywhere, but I know at the VA they have what they call treatment team. And especially if you're assigned a patient, we try and get you to where they, you can go into their treatment team meeting. And in there, you've got the nurse, you've got the social worker, you've got the psychiatrist, you've got the patient. You can learn a lot. Okay? If for some reason, let's say you missed your patient going in, then we try and at least get you into somebody's treatment team. One thing that's going to be a little different um, at the VA, they have a court system there that they actually, this guy that was antisocial that I was telling y'all about, he actually had to go to court, and they had to say that, no, because, of course, he wanted out. There is nothing wrong with me. Um, So the court made him stay there. But we are going to try and see if we can get some of y'all to go in to see one of those proceedings. It would be very interesting. Have you ever heard of this? Okay. I'll bring a piece of candy tomorrow to whoever. How do you pronounce it? Milieu. Milieu. Therapy. You're going to hear this a lot. What is it? Isn't that the quiet, calm yes, quiet, calm environment? Yes. The psychiatric mental health nurse provides structures that maintain a safe and therapeutic environment in collaboration with patients, family, and other health care clinicians. 
Now, granted, it's a little different at the VA than Rowan, but visiting hours are only at a certain time, and it's usually in the afternoon for the VA. So for those of you that are going to be doing evenings at the VA, it could be that you can see some family interactions with the patients that are that's going to be very good. They do have um, different therapy sessions morning and evening, so it's going to be good. Um, last year, we all, we had two groups at the VA going during the day, and then we realized, well, you know, we're missing a lot of these different sessions that they have in the evenings. So then that's why we decided we would try and do a day and an evening shift. Okay. But any psych acute area, this is the kind of therapy, the community that we're wanting. So, our basic assumptions, the health of the individual is to be realized and encouraged to grow. Every interaction is an opportunity for therapeutic intervention. Okay? The patient owns his or her own environment. So, at the VA, a lot of patients, they have a room to their self or two to a room. You will see that there are male and female patients up there. Now, granted, you're not going to put a male and a female in the room together, okay? If there's ten men up there and one female, guess who gets their own room? Okay? Each patient owns his or her own behavior. So there again, they make them take responsibility and be accountable for the way that they act. Um, because people that are there for a long period of time they can earn privileges, especially when we go to the chronic side and people that's been there a long time, they have movie night, they have things to where they actually go outside, and if you're in a locked ward, do I want to act out and not get to go outside, or do I want to do what I'm supposed to do so I can go outside for 15 minutes and have some fresh air, okay? So they do make them own their behavior. Peer pressure is a useful and powerful tool. Why do you think that? Why is that important? They want to be accepted. They want to be accepted. And if you're in a group session and you have one that's acting out, what if you've got about four more that's saying, man, you need to calm down. Don't get upset. They're just trying to help you. Would you take that better from somebody that maybe is going through the same thing that you're doing or from a nurse that says, calm down? Like me. <laughs> Lakeisha going to tell them to calm down. <laughs> Inappropriate behaviors are dealt with as they occur. So if someone acts out at 9 a.m., we're not going to wait till 5 p.m. to take care of that unwanted behavior. Okay. That patient is usually brought before their treatment team. Okay, well, you acted out this morning, so there's going to be none of this, or you can't go here. Okay. Restrictions and punishments are, are tried to be avoided. Like I said, they do have seclusion rooms on the VA, and like I said, I will show you those. There is a bed that is... I don't know, screwed into the floor. There is a mattress that will not come up. And you're in there with nothing but that, and you just lay there. Sometimes they can be restrained down. So while I was there, we never got to see anybody going seclusion. But it can happen. And in that case, that's the worst case scenario. Okay. Any questions about the type of therapy that we want to convey. So what kind of conditions promote this therapy? Our physiologic needs, what does that mean? Shelter, food, we have our baths. We can have visitors there again. We do have visiting hours and they're usually in the evenings. Our physical facilities. Um, at the VA, there is a day room. There is a TV in the day room. And they can go in there and watch things on TV. The only time the TV is turned off is when they have group. Okay? There is one remote. So that's interesting because you hear, who took the remote to the room? <laughs> There's one phone. They can have phone calls if they have not acted out. You know, they could have their phone calls taken away from them. But there's one phone. 
and usually it's who's got the phone. There was last year there was one guy that wanted to keep the phone in his house coat the whole time he was there. Because I'm inspecting the call. Okay? Um, self government. What do you think that includes? Hmm? There's groups. Everything is run on a schedule. And it's like a little government in there. Who would be the president? The nurses. The nurses. <laughs> really? It's going to be your treatment team? Okay. Responsibilities. Do patients have responsibilities? Yes. They have a structured program. They're in... At um, 7.30, I know that we're going to have breakfast. At 8 o'clock, we start our morning group. At 9 o'clock, I'm going to meet with the social worker. So it's very structured. And then, of course, our community and family. Yes, they can have visitors. There again, if they've not burnt their bridges with their family. So the program of therapeutic community, you have the interdisciplinary team or your treatment team. What do they call it, Rowan? A treatment team? Okay. A comprehensive treatment plan. Because when you're in there, you do want to include the patient in what, you know, what do you want to do? What is your goal? The team members. There again, who's on that team? The nurse, the doctor, social worker, the patient. And then there again, those are the disciplines that are included. So, who has heard of the DSM-5? What is it? And can you believe that our library actually has it? I'm going to pass it around for you to look at. They did make some changes. Now, the site book that you have, when you read it, it has DSM-4. It has already went to five. Okay? So for testing purposes, it will have DSM-5 on it. It used to be broken up into axles, which it would be axle one, two, three, four, and five. It's not done like that anymore. Okay? But I'm going to pass this book around. It tells a little bit about your sight disorder, what kind of symptoms, what kind of treatments, it has cultural issues in there. So it includes everything. Your DSM-5 is referred to as the Psychiatrist Bible. Used as a guideline for the diagnosis of behavioral health issues. Lists symptoms and behaviors as well as criteria for each diagnosis. Helps to standardize a diagnosis in areas that can be subjective. It covers all mental health disorders for both children and adults. Okay. Now, at the VA, we don't have anybody that's less than 18 in there. And I don't know what the youngest is at Rowan. 18. 18. So if for some reason a 16-year-old acts out, they're going to have to go to some type of adolescent facility. Typically, what you'll find is that they get sent to Charlotte to... Uh, and I think that they have a pediatric or outpatient focus up at the new CHS behavioral health in Huntersville. Is it finished? It is. It is open and they're accepting patients. Oh, okay, good. Full, cool, but but we're not there. All right. So, what do you think the difference is between a DSM-5 diagnosis and a nursing diagnosis? Medical diagnosis. The DSM-5, will it um, have anything to do with the way that you treat that patient, whether it's medications, therapies, What's a nursing diagnosis do? Y'all never seen one. 
that they're all about pills like heart problems and stuff like that. So what would be a psychiatric nursing diagnosis? Anxiety. Ineffective coping. Impaired self-esteem. Mystical thinking. <laughs> and then you what? You have to relate it to something or as evidenced by? Hmm? Related to nursing school. Anxiety as evidenced by? Nursing school. All right. It's used to diagnose a psych disorder. Includes information specifically related to culture. Remember I said there's an area on culture in there. And it discusses cultural variations for each diagnosis or disorder that describes their cultural bound syndromes. Outlines to assist clinicians in evaluating and reporting the impact of a person's cultural context. So there again, that book is in the library. Um, they will not let you check it out, so don't try. They wouldn't even let me. I had to promise I'd bring it right back after class today. But if for some reason you wanted to go and look at PTSD, that's going to be a common one, especially at the VA, or alcohol abuse, substance abuse, then you know feel free. You can find some stuff online. At the VA, what we do is typically we tell them we need eight patients, and when you come, you will look at a packet, and everything will be listed in there, and it will have your DSM-5, and it will have everything that that psychiatrist has said. So it's not like you're going to have to go, oh, my God, I've got to look at this and figure out this. No. Everything's going to be on there, but the, they may you may be seeing that DSM-5, and you'd be thinking, what is that? Now you know what that is. All right. Who wants to be my reader? Come on, Jason. <laughs> well, I said to your patient, Simon, a 63-year-old man in the psychiatric unit with a diagnosis of general lives and anxiety disorder, he asked you, can you tell me why my family thinks I am just acting sick to get attention? Uh, drawing from your knowledge of the impact of mental illness on the families, which are the following with you, including your discussion to help Simon see his illness is a real illness. And you're going to see a bunch of these starting this semester. Select all that apply. So, let's look at number one. Mental health is fundamental to health. No. Yes. yes. Mental disorders are real health conditions that have an immense impact on individuals and families. Yes. 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 The efficiency of mental health treatments is well documented. What about in that Bible going around? Yeah. Yes. A range of treatments exists for most mental disorders. Yes. Yes. So, all of them. Although on the test it will never be all of them. Not on mine anyway. Miss Hyde? Not on any of them. Okay. All right, and I think there might have been one more.